want to speak to you this morning a word to the wise. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, our Savior, Jesus Christ, made probably what was his most known, most appreciated, and deepest sermon that has ever been given. His sermon was commanding, it was connecting, and it was confirming. The Sermon on the Mount is a powerful presentation. And it had three basic elements that we're going to pay attention to this morning that make any sermon a great sermon. The first thing is he had explanation. But he also made illustration. And with the explanation and with the illustration came an application for our life. The explanation is simply a narrative of the material. The illustration is a use of people, places, and things that we can all understand. But listen to me carefully. The application of his message in your life is available to everybody, but sadly, it's not applied by everybody. Today, we celebrate your accomplishments. Your educational journey has demanded that you be enthusiastic, that you demonstrate endurance. It's declared an expectation for your life. It's a marvelous journey, but hear me carefully, it's a journey. It is not a destination. Jesus teaches us in this passage of Scripture in the book of Matthew that there's a difference in education and application. So let's read the simple story of Jesus, and then we'll see how it applies to our life. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rains fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Now listen carefully. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house upon the sand. And the rain will fall and the floods come and the winds blow and they beat against the house. And it fell and great was the fall of the house. Graduates, listen, your successful life journey will not depend on your academic prowess. It will not depend upon your educational performance. It does not rely upon social preparation. God's Word tells us that a successful life, a happy life, a life that's worthy, a life of gratification and a life of satisfaction, must be founded on the Word of God. It must focus on the work of God. And it must always and forever be fit in the will of God. When we apply the foundation of God and the focus of God and we're fit in God, we'll find that secret formula that leads to happiness and success. In this particular passage of Scripture, we're told... That's wisdom. There's a vast difference in education and wisdom. Today, you start a new beginning. You build your foundation. You will start to apply your focus. Hopefully, you will achieve a fitness. And you'll find wisdom in the Word of God, in the work of God, and in the will of God. All of our lives are a continual maze of decisions. If you stop and think about the fact that we make decisions on such a vast basis that it boggles the human mind. Not too many weeks ago, I preached a message where we had some statistics that your mind alone is capable of 10,000 decisions per second. Stop and think about that. What a vast, vast discipline that is that your mind portrays. You choose what you see, 
You choose what you do. You choose where you go. You choose with who you associate. You even choose why you choose. And your success or failure, though, ultimately comes down to two simple choices. Will I choose God's way or my way? Will I please God or will I seek to please others? Will I flourish in his wisdom or will I flounder in my own? Now I want you to hear me carefully this morning. I want you to pay special attention to this. You must choose. You do not have a choice not to choose. A failure to choose is a choice to fail. In James chapter 4 verse 17, it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. In James 1.15, it tells us further that sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. So I call you before this church body today, and I'm bringing you what we refer to as a charge. And a charge is a specific command. And I command you and I charge you today from God's word that you make a choice. Because you see, a profession without possession is only a presumption. Jesus tells us that a firm foundation is essential in our life. It's more important than the skills that we acquire, the selections that we apply the studies that we assess, the schemes that we can advance. The foundation of your life will be fundamental to the formation of your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the solid rock. And I will tell you with certainty this morning, if you live your life for things, and you live your life for thrills, you'll only find trials and troubles. The foundation of your life will be faulty. But a foundation that's patterned on the Word of God, and the work of God, and the worth of God, and the will of God, will lead to the wisdom of God. So God's word issues you a challenge. Build your life on the solid rock. In this passage of scripture, I see two people. And those two people represent two choices. Notice in that passage of scripture, the only distinction that's made between these two people were their choices. You see, they lived in the same place, the wise man and the foolish man. They both had great attributes and abilities. They both applied their talents to build their house. Yet God's word tells us one of them was wise and the other one was foolish. Verse 24 says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The wise man laid a firm foundation. He listened to God. He learned from God. He lived for God. Listen to me this morning. Don't rely on your own wisdom. Don't rely on your family and friends for a firm foundation. Don't rely on a fraternity or formalities or even the fortunes that you may amass. The wise man in this passage of scripture shows us that there's a firm foundation that's Jesus Christ that we must build our life upon. Each one of us is individually responsible for that relationship. Verse 25 says, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. The foolish man ignored God. He involved the world. He invited his own selfishness. He was impulsive. He was indecisive. He was insecure, and because of that, his foundation was built on the sand. The problem with sand is 
that it shifts and it settles and it separates and ultimately it sinks. A life that's built on shifting sand will end in a shameful sorrow. So we see two people that represent two choices. Be firmly focused on your foundation. Make sure that your foundation is secure. But not only do we have two people and two choices, we see two places. This passage of Scripture tells us about two houses. And when we see two places, I want us to look at two comparisons. We have a comparison between the life of the wise man and a comparison between the life of the foolish man. Both of these houses had an outward appearance, but inside, there was a vast difference. We live in an artificial world. Everyone's concerned about how they look. Everyone is worried and society cajoles us to care about what somebody else thinks. And as a result, we're always dressing up our outside. But we ignore the inside. I warn you. Others around you may look like an example. They may dress like they're successful. They may promise you prosperity. They may promote social equality. They may project to you that they have wisdom. But I want you to beware. Listen to me. Outward appearances are almost never inward reality. Proverbs chapter 14 says, There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. In verse 24, there was a house built on a rock. In verse 26, there was a house built on the sand. Both houses appear to be adequate. No doubt, from the outside, both houses are appealing. They appear to be acceptable. But God's Word tells us the differences were drastic on the inside. Don't compare your life to others. Don't let others set a standard for you. Don't let people, places, things, and pretenses guide your life. You must build on the firm foundation, the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. His life, His love, His lead. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it reminds us again, other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. The songwriter Edward Mote wrote, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So we have two people in this story, and there are two choices. We have two places, and there are two comparisons. But lastly, I want you to see two positions. Those two positions represent two consequences. Notice that both the wise man and the foolish man went through the storms of life. In verse 25 and 27, the same wise man and foolish man suffered from the rain that descended, the floods that came, the winds that blew, and the beating upon the house. The storms of life are the same, but pay attention. The consequences were drastically different. I want you to hear me. You will have storms in your life. You will have difficulties. You'll have trials. You'll have tribulations and temptations that are going to come into your life. Rains of heartache will come. Winds of disappointment are bound to blow. The pressures of life are going to pound upon your house. They'll either destroy you or they'll develop you. And the difference between being destroyed and being developed will be your foundation. Whether you've determined the design of your foundation. In this passage of scripture, the wise man was protected. In verse 25 it says, and it fell not. 
His house was firm. His life was steady. He was able to weather the storms of life. But in verse 27, for the foolish man, it says, and it fell. And if we look at that passage of Scripture and take your eyes up to the boards, I want you to go to the very end of that passage of Scripture. It doesn't just say that his house fell. It says great was the fall of his house. The failure to live your life on a firm foundation will not only lead to failure, but it will lead to catastrophe in your life. Great will be the fall thereof. But I tell you this morning, there's protection in the rock. There's power in the rock. There's provision for your life in the rock. There's precision in the work of the rock. There's possession of peace in the rock. There's prosperity in the rock. The sands of the world can shift. They'll be suspect and they'll be shallow. But God's rock, his firm foundation, will always be strong and steady and sure. 2020-2021 graduates, would you please stand? As a servant of Almighty God, as the pastor of this church, Endued with authority of this body, I issue a charge to your life. The charge is threefold. I want you to hear it. I want you to carry it with you. Number one, I charge you to process your choices. Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. I charge you to process your choices. Secondly, I charge you to purpose your comparison. Remember we said we don't compare our lives to others. We don't compare ourselves to another standard. Our standard is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Therefore I charge you to use purpose in your comparison. And thirdly, I charge you to be perfect in your consequences. Philippians 2.15 says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, among whom you shine as the lights in the world. That's your charge, that's your command, to go out and be light in a dark world where people need to see you and need your touch. And your process and your purpose and your perfection will reflect your foundation for the rest of your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these young men and women. Thank you, Father, that you brought them to these achievements in their life. But thank you most of all, Lord, that you died on the cross of Calvary to give them a firm foundation. And no other foundation can be laid that's more firm than what you want to do in their life. So, Father, I ask you to keep them in your love and your grace and your mercy and may they always remember this day and may they remember the charge that they're given and I ask it in the precious name 
of Jesus Christ.